present one of chennai face 24 nagaraj yells a voice from the ground floor lobby this is 8th november 2003 saturday chay park chennai i have completed my br course 8 months back right now i am working in an architect's office in chennai i came to chennai 3 months back and settled down in a mansion in chay park this mansion's name is really a funny one selectabus mansion only after so many days i understood that that was not a name but a sentence they command the customers to select abus mansion brilliant isn't it chay park is very famous area for mansions and lodges we can find all the bachelors of chennai in chay park area 90% of bachelors who come to chennai from all over india finishing their graduations will stay in chay park mansions for searching jobs authors note One more separate book must be written about my experiences in Chay Park and about Select Abu's mansion. It is that quite interesting, funny, and also touching part of my life. This Select Abu's mansion is very famous in Bells Road at Chay Park, just behind the cricket stadium. If you are lost in any part of Chay Park and you ask anybody the way for this mansion, they will guide you. It is such a legendary one. Secondly, this mansion is around a 50 years old one by 2003. I am staying in the room in first floor and my room number is 24. During 2003 mobile phones were not commonly used. Landline telephones are the sources to communicate. There are a lot of pe- public telephone booths in every corner of Chepak area and the business will go for 24 hours. Our Select Abu's mansion is having only one wall mounted telephone in the ground floor lobby nearer to the staircase. My room is in one of the corners of the first floor. Now The time is around 8:30 p.m. I have completed my dinner in Amma Mess, which is a very well-known one in Bells Road, and will give us the feel of home, homemade food. Digesting those idlis, I am now going through some drawings of a building design I am given in my office, and I hear this yelling, "24 Nagaraj." I think it is a phone call from Madurai. Then who else will call me? I never had the habit of giving this mansion's numbers to anybody else, including the office. I jump from my bed, open the door in a fraction of a second, and I'm yelling back, "Yeah, coming!" and running down the staircase. There is a guy who stays in room number 13 in second floor, holding the receiver. Thank you. I take over the phone from him while he replies back, "Welcome, dude," and he starts climbing up to his room. Hello. I whisper in my panting breath. Hmm. Appa speaking. We rise on opposite side. So, Lena, how are you all? As usual, I start my conversation. Lakshmi used to call me every day, and suddenly I would add her hi bye in the final seconds at the end of Lakshmi's call. But Veera would talk to me only once in a week, and I really feel comfortable with such gap. But now he has talked with me just two days back, and again he is now online. I take a deep inhale. I don't feel like saying this now to you but I had to be a stuff like this because I have already promised you to convey every incident happens in our family being an elder son of ours he takes a breath and I shrink my eyebrows in exclamation where is he leading the topic to he resumes and says Geeta has poured petrol on herself and burnt what the I stop my sentence and I'm stunned of what he said now She's now in intensive care unit. Body is fully burnt. We are all here in hospital. Says Veera in low voice. What? Why? I thought all the problems were solved. Her husband also promised me that he would never beat her again after the Thirupunam incident. Why did she do like this? I raised my voice with the exhaustion. I really don't know what that man Jake Mar had been doing. I don't have courage to stand against him. But I'm inquiring what actually has happened. I'll call you tomorrow and let you know. Have you had your dinner? Veera had never asked like this before. He must be in extreme anguish. I take a deep breath and say, "Yes." 9th November 2003, Sunday. This morning, Lakshmi has called me and talked with me for a while about the incident. After a few basic talks we both hang our phones down and I in profound confusion climb up the staircase every step I climb up my mind waves back to the past incidents this girl geeta must be some evil spirit see what the situation she is creating to everyone the whole family is in hospital now just one year back the whole family was in tirupunam for who for her sake 
she can never be a good soul she must have gotten a curse to be undergoing all these karma i don't know what was she in her previous birth must have done some big sin for sure that is why she is suffering and also making the whole family suffer like this she is a really a headache for everyone bullshit i don't bother if she burnt herself or whatever i'm not going to mother for this regard Lakshmi's this call is actually a hidden bidding to call me over there but I am not going enough is enough we all got stuck in a mire and that mire is Gitanjali thinking of all these when I get up the last step of the stand case I hear the telephone ring I turn back as the security of our mansion picks up and says hello the next moment he yells out 24 Nagaraj oh whoa, whoa, it's me saying which I stepped on fast and reached the phone I get the phone and say hello Nagaraj, this is Jay Kumar, your uncle. Say the opposite voice. Sulunga. I say in low voice. Nothing serious, yaar. A small fight in family, as usual. I just simply scolded her. That is for the satisfaction of my mother and other members in our family. Only then they will be happy. Otherwise, they will keep on complaining about your sister to me. Today, I didn't even put my hand on her. Not even a slap. I don't know why your sister is creating this drama. Just a little bit of kerosene only. Kerosene or petrol? That too on her leg. Not in any other part of her body. Doctor has applied bandage around her burnt portion on her legs. Nothing serious here. Your dad might have asked you to come to Madurai. No need for that mapla. Good night here. I'll call you tomorrow. He kept on speaking for 5 minutes and all of a sudden cut off his call just like a typical politician. Dropping off the phone, I sit down on the steps, keep my palms on my cheeks and break my head with so many intangible knots. Past 26. That Tuesday, 10th October 2000, evening 6.30 pm, the Tata Sumo entered into Ayanar Koyal Street and stopped in front of Veera's house. Lakshmi and a few of our neighbor ladies were eagerly waiting for the arrival of this car from Kodaikanal. They were all standing at the entrance of the house. Opening the door of the car while getting down Veera, Geeta, Jaykumar and his men. The moment she got down from the car, Geeta, the small girl who did that blunder of eloping with her lover boy, saw the eyes of Lakshmi and all the ladies standing in front of her house and also saw all the eyes peeping through their windows and balconies of the house in that street. And this naive girl felt very ashamed of committing such a crime of the nation. Hanging her head down, she was walking towards Lakshmi. As usual, the customary women's crying staged there. My respect, my self-esteem, my nobility, everything is buried. Walking amid the ladies, Veera was delivering such a dialogue to establish as if Geeta had demolished all the reputation her poor fathers gathered so far and also those neighbor ladies were saying Veera as a hero and Geeta as a traitor. Jay Kumar and his men lived for their home in the next few minutes and most of the ladies lived for their houses in our street except Lalita and Yadavanti. The latter was the owner of Belu's rented house. Sit here. Pointing a chair in front of him, Veera sat in one chair in living room. Following that, Geeta with shivering body sat on the chair he pointed. Lakshmi, Lalita and Yadavanti were sitting on the floor resting their back on the wall. Sarani and Mayal were standing on the edge of the room, not knowing if they had to sit, stand, stay or run away. Veera was overreacting. He was holding his head down as if he was a conjurer to exorcise the ghost out of Geeta. Slowly he turned his face towards Lalita with a straight mark lower angle vision and said, She has killed me. She has buried me alive. She has killed everyone in this family. In his bass voice, there conquered a silence for a moment after the splitter. Lalita whispered Veera in grief. Sulunganna, she replied. Take care of the rest of my three children. Veera stood up, walked fast towards the kitchen speaking. I cannot live with this shame further. Took a can of kerosene, opened the lid. We three shall die. We cannot live. We must not live. He poured the kerosene on Geeta, Lakshmi and himself and threw away the can to search for the matchbox. In all these moments of him, Lalita and Yadavanti were stopping Veera from his performance. We must die, we must not live, we can never live in this world. He found one matchbox and started opening that. Lalita plucked that from his hand and threw away. Anna, what are you doing? Do you want the rest of your children to go orphans? Lalita shouted. 
Veera was again shaking his head like a conjurer drenched in the kerosene, sat on the chair, closed his eyes and moaned, Ayyo, how will I walk in the street as a deputy collector now? How will I live my rest of my life? All of us to die. He was keeping on rotating his head like a drunkard. Saranya and Mayal were witnessing that incident innocently standing in a corner with no reaction to that scene. Author's note. The same Saranya today in 2014 is scrutinizing that scene brilliantly and wondering if that was the way a parent of a blundered child must react for such situation. She further says that if she were in the position of Veera, she would have handled and dealt the same case in a totally different way which would dismatch the consequent feature of Geeta's blunder. Sit down. Again, Geeta and Veera were sitting opposite to each other like a BBC interview moment. You were cheating me right from the beginning. Veera saw the eyes of Geeta and asked. She was just trembling and answered. Veera turned to Lakshmi and asked. Are you sure she didn't steal any money or jewel from our locker? Lakshmi kept quiet but Geeta felt like she had a heart attack. Just because of her love she had to pass through all these blames she was convicted. You ran with that boy and stayed in some lodge. Veera saw everyone in that room including Saranya and Mail and again turned towards Geeta and asked, Did you sleep with them? No dad, the moment Geeta replied it, Veera ambushed on her and slapped her left cheek and scaled, You slut, don't open your mouth. Again immediately slapped her right cheek and said, You daughter of a prostitute, don't call me your dad. And again slapped on her left and right and left and right and kept on saying, You slut prostitute. Lalita first ran to stop it, but then she didn't want to intervene in that daughter substance. Lakshmi, Saranya or Mayal was all useless standing there. Even if I were there, I could have done nothing against Veera then. We were all not that worldly to stand against him during those days. That innocent insect Geeta was tormented by Veera that whole night. Saranya could never forget that night forever in her life. Author's note. Here, I want to remind the readers the scene in which Veera thrashed Geeta using a wooden ruler for her running into a two-wheeler when she was a primary school kid and that, that night she was almost dead. And here, this is another such night. We are all owners in the street. I warn you. Veera turned towards the other ante and continued. If you are not throwing away that bastard's family in next one month from your house, I'll do whatever I can against you. And you. He turned to Lalita and said, You are the one who introduced that poor need to our family. And this came running towards Lakshmi and hit on her head and said, This prostitute was the one who invited all these brothels inside my house. When he finished screaming thus, all noted that Lakshmi had fallen down unconsciously fainting in that brutal struck on her head. Veera's omnipotent performance, Rudra Dandav, came to an end only there. The next day, Veera was keeping on murmuring the whole morning. First he started murmuring to let everyone know that he was angry. Later it became a habitual routine. He murmured to moan about the incident. He kept on mumbling to himself. Who will marry her? Who will marry her? Like a broken tape recorder, he kept on whispering this word to himself the whole morning. This who will marry her had become his breath that day. Author's Note as a narrator of the story, I don't want to support Geeta and taunt Veera's overreaction. I want to express my words impartial. But what has she done? Why must a head of a family decide after such a mistake committed by one of his young ones? As a deputy collector, Veera must have seen so many problems in his district Deva Kotai, but he couldn't solve a problem happened in his family. Why? Yenanga, Lakshmi came to Veera. He lifted up his head and half of his attention. I came to know one thing. I just want to deliver it to you. If you feel okay, you may desire it, said Lakshmi. What? said Veera in a lifeless voice. Jay Kumar expressed his desire to marry our Gita. He has conveyed it to his mother. And I got the news, said Lakshmi eagerly. What? raised his voice in enthusiasm. Really? I cannot believe this, said Veera with a cheerful voice. Yes. I have confirmed it before I am talking it to you. Yes, really, he wholeheartedly wants to marry our Gita despite the situation, said Lakshmi. Ishwara, Vishnu Bhagavan, Narayana, all the gods I pray have not unclasped my hands, 
Vera folded his hands and thanked all his favorite gods. Okay, shall I approach him regarding this? We must get this girl married so soon, otherwise we can never lift up our head to walk in the street. Our respect will be buried. Are you sure Jay Kumar wants to marry our Geeta? Veera kept on asking this for many a time during this conversation and finally stood up and stretched himself with a satisfaction. Tomorrow is a nice day. Veera was checking up in the calendar and said, Morning I will meet Jay Kumar and his family to speak about this, said Veera. Veera didn't even want Lakshmi as a bride's mother to accompany him in such a proposal. He never had a thought of it. That character had been inbuilt and soaked in his blood. He was not purposefully avoiding her or trying to boss over her because he was born with such defiance. Nevertheless, Lakshmi never considered these as prestige issues. But after we kids have grown up and seen the external world and other families, we are thinking about all these rigid stuff of Veera and are really wondering how a man could be like this. Author's Note this is the biggest fault Lakshmi has done in her life, recommending Jay Kumar. She never had known that her entire future was gonna turn upside down just because of this recommendation. I am actually an agnostic guy, but here I really wondered the drama of God in the screenplay of lives. What a turn, what a twist, what an amazing script in this worldly life. The next day, Veera went to Jay Kumar's house. Those people welcomed the men with so much glee and the talk went successful. So, Veera had given his word to that brilliant grandma to give his daughter Geeta for marrying Jay Kumar. This happened in that Thursday. Friday night, I came from Ramanathapuram, found so many ladies in my home, entered into the kitchen and asked Lakshmi, Ennamma, what is happening? Why the entire street is here? She replied, Are you hungry? Did you take your lunch in college? And I understood that Lakshmi was stuck like something from me. Then I entered into the bedroom where Geeta was surrounded by all the ladies and as I entered, Geeta saw my face and gave me a smile. I was not knowing anything about this incident the whole weekend and came to know only through mile while he dropped me off in the bus terminal that Sunday night. The point was that nobody asked Geeta's consent for this alliance with Jay Kumar, but why? Was that because she stood in the cage of guilty?